Hello and welcome to this taste challenge. Okay, another turn, another episode in the tournament. Yes, we just finished 2017's NCAA basketball tournament. We got the college baseball tournament coming up starting in June. <laughs> and that, that kind of thing just keeps going on and on. So this is a whiskey tournament. <laughs> Now, you might have watched the uh, video I posted this morning. It was record. I always tend to record these things days ahead of time, just in case something happens, like I get sick or I have to go somewhere. This is this was a Crown Royce gin. Um, I was surprised by how good it was. I think it could compete, <laughs> not for a national championship, but it could. Hold its own for a few rounds. Um, today is Canadian Club versus Jack Daniels. Now, the previous round in the tournament was Jim Beam and Jack Daniels. Uh, you know, you might know that Jack Daniels lost that round. It's not a single elimination tournament, but we don't let people just keep. You, eventually, you, you have to go home if you don't keep winning now. Some of the blended whiskeys had to go home. Kentucky Dale is out of the tournament. Uh, Kentucky Deluxe is out of the tournament. Uh, Beams 8 Star, well, we might bring that one back in as a, as a ringer. <laughs> Two reasons. I can still get the or I'm going to go check the 2005 version of the 8 star, the 70-30 blend. The modern is a 80-20 blend, so that could factor in. And they weren't, they weren't uh, involved in the tournament anyway. Interestingly, McCormick blended whiskey from Missouri beat out... Jim Beam in a blind taste test, you say, wait a minute, back up. A blended whiskey, 80-20 blend from Missouri, some bargain brand beat out the most the most popular bourbon whiskey in the world. Well, that's what happened in the blind taste test now. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> we tried. It beat out Canadian Club. <laughs> hey, could it beat out Jim Beam? I don't know. It beat out Canadian Club. It's still a pretty highly touted um, Canadian blended whiskey. Blended with all whiskey, not 80% grain neutral spirits. Uh, um, interestingly, the, the Canadian Club, I think, is listed as a tier three whiskey uh, liquor, just like the Jim Beam is a tier three on uh, Proof 66. They say that it's well regarded and it's won many medals, but that it might present exotic flavors. I thought that Jack Daniels presented more exotic flavors than those two. That would be the tier three. Okay, so here we got Canadian Club, 1858, introduced 1858, 80 proof. Jack Daniels, 1866, 80 proof. This is from Tennessee, and Canadian Club is from Canada. Uh, doesn't say where in Canada, Toronto maybe, I don't know, but it's actually blended, it's it's actually bottled in Illinois, so they put it in a tanker truck, they ship it to Illinois and bottle it, and then they ship it back to Canada to sell it. These big companies do these types of things. Uh, but some other differences, this is aged six years. And this is aged in indeterminate amount of time, probably three years, because the old labels used to say age four years. Then they said, well, they change it to we just sell it when we think it's ready, which to me means they're not going to four, four years, they're going around three years. They both, well, I know the Jack Daniels used to be 90 proof. And I think this was higher proof also. A lot of these modern whiskeys have been lowered to appeal to the modern drinker and also to say 
costs for using by using less ingredients. All right, <laughs> might be the real reason. Awards. Uh, well, Canadian Club has won some awards, as has Jack Daniels. So I have links to their websites. I'm not going to read off their websites. Charcoal filter. Jack Daniels charcoal filtered for its put in the barrels. Canadian Club might be charcoal filtered after being placed in the barrels. They do have a pretty extensive description of how they pro well since it's a Canadian whiskey how they process it <laughs> and then Jack Daniels has an extensive section with videos and information on how they process it so whiskey with a EY whiskey with a Y <laughs> all right okay this is sold as Tennessee whiskey, not sold as bourbon whiskey, although it would qualify as a bourbon whiskey if you want to be techno. <clears throat> this is a Canadian blended whiskey, a whole different animal. Still whiskey, but it's a different type. And I know somebody that really only drinks blended Canadian whiskeys, a guy named Dave, who is a guy I know around here. Oh, he must be about oh, almost 70 years old, 70. And he said he just prefers the Canadian blended whiskeys. The taste appeals to him. Okay, this was bottled on the 165th day of 2013. 105th, 165th day of 2013. It's got the date, guys. This was bottled. Oh. I don't understand that code. Huh. Is that the same code? It's saying, let's see, the bottle says 16 on it. Let's see, 205A2E1906. Hmm. Oh, <clears throat> I can't get that one figured out, sorry. I have to think about that. All right, Jack Daniels, Canadian Club. All right, people cut, keep telling about Gentleman Jack. There's all different variants of Canadian Club. They have rye and everything. I'd like to try all that. Okay, if there's you know limited time frame opportunities. If I could live as long as Methuselah, I would be in no rush. And there's no purpose rushing anyway. Just do what you can. Now you might say, but those videos are only made for entertainment purposes anyway. Yes, that's true. Jack Daniels seemed to have a little darker appearance. The Canadian Club was a slightly paler amber, okay? Which is interesting since it's aged probably twice as long. I have six viewers. Let's see here in the... Craig says, did you stop by Billy Bob's Barbershop this morning? All right. I do not know that person. 
I do not know William Robert. All right. Oh. Sort of sweet. Of course, it's got a strong alcohol aroma. What do you expect? It's 80 proof, 40% alcohol. So there's some antiseptic. There's even a peppery note on a deep, deep inhalation of some paper. Hmm. This one to the right. I'm using my left hand, but it's to the right, my right. Much more floral, sweeter. They're, they both have they both have the alcohol burn in the nose, okay? But this one is more floral. It's 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 more like the honeysuckle. You know, if you live that down in Louisiana, darling, and you get a honeysuckle flower, <laughs> it'll have those those attributes. <laughs> hmm. Well, I think the one to my right smells better. The one to my left, it doesn't smell bad. It just smells more, um, mm, smells more corporate. No, it just smells more, um, it smells less aromatic. It's just a, a fainter, maybe even you could say mellower aroma. Well, they're both very nice. These are not junk. Okay, junk. I hear some people saying Jack Daniels. I read some reviews. It tastes like it smells like airplane glue, and it tastes like paint thinner and all that. Oh, I've never tasted paint thinner. I don't think that would be a good idea to do that. You probably die. And they say all these terrible things, and I'm like, what are they talking about? I mean, I can see if you said, well, it's okay. Some of the more reasonable reasonable reviews, they said it's okay. You can mix it. But it's the same thing with Budweiser. That's what kind of got me interested in doing video reviews. People would say Budweiser, oh, it, it tastes like uh, fish scales and mercuricomb and it tastes like um, castor oil and cod liver oil and tripe and all these terrible things. I'd rather drink dog urine. And I'm thinking, what are they talking about? And then you have some, a few written reviews that are, I'm talking about 10, 12 years ago, that were more reasonable, like, well, that's okay. And then some people just flat out like it. But it's the crazy reviews that always, I can't get over those. But like William says, they're just trying to get a cheap laugh and they, they try to outdo each other with making ridiculous descriptions. Like I say, trying to establish street cred in the beer drinking community or in the whiskey drinking community. Sure, it's the same with wine. They just take a popular brand that a whole lot of people like, and so they dog on it to show that they're more erudite and they have a very um, established um, drinking regimen. I don't know, but to me, it makes the person lose credibility when you take something that's just ordinary and you call it horrendous. All right, so taste time. It's weird because every time I taste these, they taste different. <laughs> True. This one's more cinnamon. No, it's not fireball. Definitely has peppery spice notes. Imagine getting that from just corn, barley, rye, water, charcoal, filter, and oak barrels, but, oh, and yeast. Um, but um, 
supposed to use the mash from the previous, the Jack Daniels using mash from a previous batch, the sour mash process developed by Dr. James Crow in the 1830s. Um, <laughs> Somebody sneak in my house and put cinnamon in these whiskeys. This one has nougat, you know, like that. It has a distinct Three Musketeers bar taste. It's the milk chocolate and nougat, and then the floral arrangement, dried flowers. Mmm. Now you say, these are mass produced, you idiot. They cannot have all those complex flavors. Well, you say that, I'm tasting it. Craig said it was just a joke. I know it was. If you were serious, I would question your mental faculties. Uh, Mr. Helen says, what is more alcohol content? No, it's the same, 80 proof. They're identical. And they're both made in North America. <laughs> and they're both bottled in the United States. They're both owned by mega corporations. Jack Daniels is, stole, is sold at every liquor outlet. Whereas Canadian Club is sold at many liquor outlets. The Canadian Club is $11.99 for a 750 milliliter glass bottle at Walmart. And Jack Daniels is about um, $23 and $22.99. So it's a much more expensive. So by tasting these, what am I finding out? The Canadian Club is way better. I don't care which one is which. The Canadian Club is a tremendously superior value so much cheaper i'm not pay i don't want to pay for a name okay i'm tired of paying for names i pay for what's in the bottle you say well what do you do when you buy beer i don't pay for budweiser because that's a name i understand people like to pay you know i'm not going to pay 9.99 for a 12 pack that's cheap yeah but it ain't as cheap as $17 even for a 30 pack of Milwaukee's best lager, which can go toe to toe with Budweiser. And some people will make the argument that it's better. So for everyday drinking, I buy what's, I, I, I'm just not paying for the name. Sorry, folks. So they're, they're pretty much more or less. I mean, I haven't really gotten into it too deep, but they're pretty much the same in taste. So if they're pretty much the same in the quality of the taste. They, they're very different if you noticed what I was describing. But as far as like their units, the IEUs, they're the same. So right there, that's a lesson. You want to save money and get a good value? Canadian Club will beat Jack Daniels any day of the week. Now, some people are going to get mad. You say, well, well, when you go to the motorcycle gang, when your motorcycle club has meetings at that bar, do you show up at Canadian Club? No, I'm gonna show up with Jack Daniels because I I want to fit in with my people. You know what I'm saying? People are gonna say Canadian Club, you are cheap. Bring some JD, man. Is that that is that sort of mentality? You find it in wine too, and people will say ridiculous things, and I'm like, no, it's not true. <laughs> And Jean, Jean Pierre talks about that all the time. Sir, showing up a part at a party and people want to catch an attitude. Not that they're paying for it now. I went to a a birthday party, a huge birthday party once in Baton Rouge, and I brought a six pack of Bush, and I can't remember the other six pack, the plain cans. And I I saw people drinking that Bush, and no one complained. But you, it's Baton Rouge. I know people are more reasonable there, and they enjoy themselves, and they're not uptight. <laughs> Baton Rouge is a drinking town with a football problem. Actually, that was in St. Gabriel, Baton Rouge metro area. 
and it was on Bayou Paul Road. This has a smokier and roastier taste as well, not to mention that Three Musketeers Bar. It has that smoky, smoky, what is smoke? What is smoke aligned with charcoal <laughs> carbon, right? This has a bigger carbon footprint. This is destroying the planet, whereas this is saving the planet. No, so I think, I think, are you collecting liquor bottles like you do with certain beer cans and bottles, says Craig. No, I'm not, because it's just too many. I'd love to do it, but it's too many. I mean, I'd like to have, I mean, in a way, you'd want to do it, but I, I, I just, I'm not. I'd love to have the Jack Daniels and the car stairs and the, that Crown Rust bottle would be nice because it's so rare and unusual. It is pretty sharp looking, even though it's a, I guess you'd say an economy brand, but no, nah, you got to make a cutoff somewhere, somewhere. Ah, uh, I think this is Jack Daniels and I think this is Canadian Club, but which one's better? Hmm, hmm, no, yeah, that's the 12 to $24 question. Beautiful day, by the way. We have a cold front coming through. Could get down to like 53 for two nights later in the week. Hmm. Well, that one on my right that I think is Jack Daniels. It's okay. It's good. I mean, it's good. Great. <laughs> Would I buy it? I'd buy it. If I could get it cheap, I wouldn't pay $24 for it. Might pay 10 or 11, maybe 12, I don't know. I mean, some of these whiskeys around here are $7.99, $8.99 a bottle. They might be just as good, might be better. Why pay a lot when you get some cheaper, right? Why do it? The one over here is sweeter, more sugary, a little more pleasant, a little smoother, a little nicer. A little less harsh. Now, when I did Jack Daniels on its own solo, I didn't find it was harsh, it was smooth. But here, when you do one against the other, they, they start to present some things that you didn't expect. So I find this a little harsh. A little bit. I don't mind harsh. You know, I get tired of everything being smooth. Here comes the United States Postal Service. Um, talk about a variance. Sometimes they'll be here at seven in the morning. I've seen them arrive at six fifty. Sometimes they won't deliver the mail till six at night. And during the Christmas, New Year's period, sometimes they'll come on Sunday and deliver packages, true story. Um, maybe I'm picking up a little corn now too. I just I just think, I'm gonna feel played if I get it wrong, but I think this is Jack Daniels. Let's see the comments before I, in French Canada, they drink Molson Export. I've never had it, said so, so Mr. Hillen. Mr. Hillen, Labatt 52, never had that. Been to French Canada. Drove through Quebec in the countryside. <sighs> Bought a bottle of Milwaukee's Best lager. Don't have it anymore because I purged my collection of all foreign bottles. But it was a Canadian bottle. It was Milwaukee's Best from 1990. Well, it was from 2000. I was in Canada that, that at that time in the year 2000. And I couldn't understand French, really. The girl was speaking fast, you know. I said, oh, I just want to get this bottle and these chips. And she didn't understand. I said, how much are these chips? No, people say, oh, in Canada, all the French people can speak English. Well, maybe in Quebec City, maybe in Montreal, but she, certainly not in the country. She was lost to what I was saying. So I said, well, so she just rang it up. And I said, oh, yeah, that's okay. I paid for it. But, um, yeah, I had that a bottle, a 12-ounce bottle. How do you like that? Of Milwaukee's Best. Those exist. <laughs> So do bottles of Schaefer Light. 
I have a glass bottle of Schaefer over there. Okay, uh, I'm gonna vote for. I'm gonna vote my conscience. Let your conscience and your taste buds be your guide. I'm saying this is better. It's a pretty good deal better, actually. It's more enjoyable. And I'm saying it's Canadian Club, but let's see. I got it. I got it. I got it. Hey, I've been nailing these. The beer, I do terrible. Like when I do Bush against Pass Blue Ribbon, against Schlitz, et cetera, et cetera. I always get those wrong. I mean, they're so, they're so close. They're so close, which is a very strong argument for shop price. Shop price. And then why would you buy, why would you buy <laughs> Rockdale Classic, which I thought was an atrocity of mankind? It was a D. I mean, I could drink it. It wasn't camo in F or 40 Street Legal in F. But it was pretty damn bad, excuse my language. And it's more expensive than milk, uh, a Steel Reserve 211. I, they got Steel Reserve 211 at Walmart, a six pack pint cans for 428. Why, oh, why, oh, why would I pay 447 for a six pack of something that's almost literally light years worse than it. Uh, Steel Reserve 211, I'm talking about the 6%, not the 8%, 8%, 8%, 8%. I'm talking about 6%. It's so good. It really is one of the better American style adjunct lagers. Yes, we've been getting that since 2003. Unfortunately, when they introduced the 6%, they discontinued the 8% in our area. But that's okay. That was a little harsh anyway. So I shop price when it comes to beer, people. Not with craft beers. I mean, I bought KBS the other day for $5.99. A single bottle and if I'm paying $5.99 for a single bottle it better be the best beer I've ever tasted in the world and it better have no flaws it better have no flaws the ballast point uh, victory at sea it had flaws it had flaws it was too burnt tasted burnt Still scored it an A, but it, it, it had flaws. But then again, it was only, what, $1.99 for the bottle at Mathern? Something like that. It was cheap, like really cheap. But if I'm paying $5.99 for a 12-ounce bottle for this KBS, I swear, I swear it better be the, it better have no flaws. It better be a 100 out of 100 perfect beer, okay? Otherwise, we got a problem. Now, when I reviewed it three years ago, oh. Oh, sure. I loved it because I got it for free. <laughs> John Sharon gave it to me. I mean, I still gave it a fair rating and it was fabulous and everything. Wasn't perfect. But for free, it don't have to be perfect. When I'm paying $5.99 a bottle, it better be perfect. You say you might say you paid fourteen. You paid fourteen dollars a bottle for West Flatter and twelve. Remember when you paid eighty five dollars a six pack? You remember that? I got two glasses with it, six beers, and they were perfect. People often ask me, "What is the best beer you've ever had?" Always the answer to that question is always West Flatter and twelve. Best beer I've ever had, and I revisit it. It's still the best. Now, the tasting niche, she did a video, but I'm not participating in that because that was sort of like a tagging slash chain mail type exercise, and I don't do those things. Like on Facebook, people say, if you love God, you have to tag and you have to like and share this. No, I don't. I'm not a part of your chain mail stuff. I don't like that kind of thing. I mean, if I was participating in it, I would have said my favorite beer is West Flotaran 12. I would have said... You know, I would have answered the questions if I was participating in her exercise. I would have said, what got me into beer? I would have said, um, um, just a general interest in food and beverage products and just to try it out in February 96. No compelling reason. Besides, I say, well, people drank it. I was kind of bored that day. Let me try it. I bought a six pack of Miller High Life seven ounce ponies. It tasted good. So I continued the project, which continues into this very day without a break. 
how do you stay thin? You know, if she would, if I was participating, I'm not participating. If I was participating, you know, like, how do you stay thin? Well, I don't eat a lot. Eat a small breakfast, a good size lunch, and a small supper. So I stay around a 145. Around. It, it varies. I need to lose about a pound to get back to 145. Even if I went to 150, I'm well within the range, the body mass index range that the insurance companies put out. So that's not the issue. But small breakfast, good size lunch, small supper, almost never snack, and walk a mile a day every day. One mile a day every day, never miss. So that, that would be that. Um, and, and if I was participating and the question was, uh, are you an alcoholic? I would say certainly not. I'm a hobbyist. I prefer the term hobbyist. It sounds a lot better. Plus, it's the truth. I have alcohol all the time. They drink in the morning. They drink at work. They are, you know, they got a pro really in modern psychology. They use the term problem drinking. You know, with your cognitive behavioral approach. They don't like the word alcoholic. Um, am I a problem drinker? No, not usually. Do you get drunk? Not really. Not on purpose. I never was into that uh, in, in high school, college. I just didn't care about it. I was more into going to football games and writing down all the scores and making schedules and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't really into the drinking culture. I, I mean, I'm just saying that if I was answering her questions, which I'm not, I'm saying if I was going to answer the questions and those kind of things. So I'm not getting involved with that. I don't want to get into it and um, I'm not going to, and I refuse to. So, but if I was, those would be the answers to those questions. Um, You don't want to turn off, and I've, I've said this. Anyway, I've answered all those questions embedded in my videos over the years, so there's no purpose to get involved in that. And I've said over the years, um, you don't want to turn a fun hobby into a disastrous life problem. Um, I knew people, I've known people that have drank themselves to death, like died, they died, 49 years old. And I know people that do beer reviews, they seem to have a drinking problem, they, they seem drunk a lot, they, they are drunk a lot. They, some of these people who I know, some of them I no longer talk to, some who have blocked me. That's another issue, the prickly, you know, the prickly, thin skin, touchy beer reviewer, video beer reviewer, we know the type, offended at everything. They don't really want interaction as, as much as they want compliance. They're, living, they're sort of living in their own private Idaho, and if you don't buy into the program 100%, they're going to go after you. They're going to cut you off. They're not going to engage you. They're going to cut you off. Dealt with that. But uh, some of them seem to have some of them seem to have drinking problems. I know some of them do, and drug problems, and I know that for a fact because I've actually literally firsthand observed that, which was uncomfortable to <laughs> uncomfortable to witness, you know. When somebody's using illegal drugs in front of you, you're like, okay, uh, well, uh, how about them white socks? <laughs> it's like extremely uncomfortable, you know, so uh, to see that. But anyway, so pull up wins. Jack Daniels, you know what? You're about to get kicked out this tournament. Uh, I'm, I'm serious. Uh, that's two losses in a row, and that ain't a good sign, so... Your price ain't that great. $24 for this? Uh, I don't think so. As it matches up against these other ones, ain't too great. So this is not working out too well. You better step up your game, uh, James. Um, McCormick beat out Canadian Club. So imagine little old humble McCormick from Missouri beats out Canadian Club. Well, that's what happened in a blind taste test. So they're still in the running for show. And Canadian Club is still in the running, so you know what's coming next. You know what's coming next. Canadian Club versus Jim Beam. Wow, now that's going to be that's that's hard to predict. Actually, actually, before I did this other the, the one we're on right now, I actually thought that Jack Daniels would lose to Canadian Club. I just felt felt that Canadian Club had a better flavor and overall overall superior quality exercise to find out and it turned out to be the case this one could be a little tougher 
Although I think I'll almost immediately figure out which is which. I think the Jim Beam has that very noticeable moldy um, moss type flavor, but I don't know if it's better. My prediction is that Canadian Club is going to beat it, but I just this I do not know. So maybe in a, a week or less we'll do that exercise. Let's see. Let's see. So that's it for the comments. Looks like online comments or the live comments. So maybe you'll have some comments I'll look at later. So thank you for watching this video production. Um, I know the the video quality is not superb. This is a low definition Logitech webcam. It's not going to be super high quality. I have a very, very high definition uh, camera I use for my recorded videos. Those work out very nice. And I don't even have it set on the highest setting. I can do much higher definition, but it just takes too long to uh, to upload. I don't feel like uploading. And when I actually when I watch video reviews, I usually listen to them more than watch them. I'm more into what they're saying about it. I don't need to see the guy. He's got a new shirt. It's wonderful. You know, I don't need to see it in. 3D, you know, doesn't matter to me. Thank you for watching this video production.